Welcome back to another video on using Nina. In this 12th video we're going to look at flat frames and there are a number of ways of doing it depending on what type of equipment you're using and what you want to use as the light source and when you want to take the, la the light frames themselves. In my case I'm using refractors and I typically do my flat frames during the daytime within the observatory with a fixed light source and this is potentially the easiest one to do and then we can go on to explain some of the other variations. So I'm going to bring up Nina and I've created an equipment profile which is specifically for flats. So it says flats only for both my setups using um, a short focal length with a small sensor and a long focal length for a, a big sensor in my dual camera setup. And in that setup if I look at the equipment I have a camera which I can select and make sure it's the right one, the 183, hit OK and connect it and I'm going to start it cooling. Some people don't bother cooling their cameras when they take flat frames. There's no harm in it certainly so I'm just going to do it and then connect to my filter wheel. So while it's cooling we're going to take a look at the flat wizard. This has got its own unique menu on the left hand side and it has a number of different modes and different settings. So for instance, there's a single mode which allows you to take a flat frame for a particular filter and you can select which filter you want. And there's a multi-mode which allows you to take a number of filters all in one go, which is what I'm going to do. There's a number of different modes. There's one that alters the exposure to match a particular intensity. There's another mode that changes the brightness of a flat panel so that you can use a constant exposure time and lastly there's sky flats. With sky flats you need to have a telescope connected and slew to a part of the sky where you want to take your flat frames. If you do sky flats the camera is changing its exposure so that it has the right intensity. But if I go back to the dynamic exposure one and go back to the single mode you'll see here that you can select a number of different parameters. So these first two are the limits of exposure, 0.1 to 30 seconds, and it'll do a step size of half a second, which is probably a little bit on the coarse side. So I'm gonna make it 0.3 seconds because some of my exposures will be quite short. And you can set where you want your average exposure to be. The default is 50%, some cameras which are slightly non-linear at the bottom end benefit from having histograms that are actually very dark grey as opposed to medium grey and I set mine to 10% which seems for my senses to give a better result and a tolerance to that threshold. What I can now do is once it started to cool down I can start taking some pictures. Before doing that however there are a few other things I need to set. For instance I normally take 25 frat flames and I normally take 25 matching darks for the same duration as each of the flat frames for each of the different filters. And this is computed automatically when it calculates the histogram peak and sets the time for the dark frames. Now here I've set up a single mode filter with the, all the tolerances and the settings. On the multi-mode I need to do exactly the same and by clicking the little arrow you can start to see the other parts of the system. So green 10%, blue 10% and so on. The other thing that we need to think about is the gain settings. Now for instance I typically use different gain settings for narrowband and wideband filters and I must take the flat frames using the same gain settings. Now at the moment, in the flat wizard, the gain setting is a constant for the whole flat wizard. So I'm going to have to take my flat frames in two halves. I need to take my RGB filters with a low gain setting and then stop and then take my flat frames for the narrow band later on. So I'm just going to disable and I'm going to just shrink those down so you can see what's happening. I don't actually need luminance, I'm not using it at the moment, so I might as well save myself some time. So I'm simply going to take RGB with a gain of zero. 
And when I come to finish the flat frames for this and then enable these and put in my revise gain for the narrowband filters, matching the exposures I use for the target. Just before we hit play, I'm going to give the target name something meaningful so I can recognize these flat and flat darks from the others. So I'm going to put in the equipment and the angle, which is 30 degrees. And then I'm going to hit play. And it'll start to take pictures and it will start at 0.1 seconds. Look at the intensity and work out what it needs to be. So it's decided that the target exposure time is 0.28 seconds for a red filter. And it will carry on doing this 25 frames, flat frames that is, of red, green and blue, and then prompt me to put the lens cap on and it will do the darks. And then once I've done that, I shall repeat for the others with a different gain setting up here so that it matches the exposures I take. So I shall come back when this is done. The flat frames have finished taking and it's prompted me to put the lens cap on, which I've done. I'm now going to hit OK and it'll do that quite rapidly and store them in the directories. So off it goes and we'll come back to do the narrowbands when it's finished. Now one thing to note about the difference between narrowband and wideband exposures. At the moment my exposures are sub one second and I've stopped using electroluminescent panels because they do not like really short exposures. You sometimes get banding. And also I find that the panels that I use do not have much deep red output. So I could be getting uh, hydrogen alpha and sulfur exposures up to 30 seconds when my luminance exposure is about a second. So I've stopped using electroluminescent panels and I'm using LED strips. These are used for growing plants and they're advertised as wide spectrum and they have an array of different LEDs in the strip. Each one is about a foot and a half long and it's powered from USB and I find that they give a more natural light including dark red and near infrared and the exposure balancing between uh, the reds in the narrowband and the wideband filters is more even and they just simply have magnetic feet and stick to the observatory wall opposite the telescope and the telescope itself to get the diffusion I've just simply made a cotton shower cap over the top of its opening and that just is elasticated and pops on and that does the same job as the classical white t-shirt. So I'm just going to let this finish and then we'll discuss some other options. One such option is to remember these times for the flat files and also the flat darks. And for instance if I was to run the flat wizard for my narrowband filters but before I did that I had connected in the equipment tab a flat panel that enabled me to set uh, intensities or turn the flat panel on and off. What it will do is when it's calculated the optimum exposure for each, it will populate it in a table. That in itself is useful, but what's more useful is that these numbers can automatically be referenced in a sequence using flat frame sequence instructions. But just before I do that, if I just go back to the flat wizard, and just look at the other options here. If I do dynamic brightness and then look at my options here, you see that the options underneath each of the filters changes slightly, which enables you to consider the maximum minimum flat panel brightness that you can set and so forth. And if I go for sky flats and then look under the options, the options again change slightly. But obviously with sky flats, the light levels changing. So this panel in the equipment tab under the flats, you cannot use because it'll be different every time. And the whole point is consistency. Taking these numbers here, let's look at how we could use them in a sequence. If we take a look at a sequence and look down the side of here under the instructions, you'll see that there's a number under flat device. 
And if we look at each in turn, we can close the flat panel cover, we can open it, we can set its brightness, we can turn it on and off, we can do a trained dark flat exposure and a trained flat exposure. That gives us a number of options. For instance, at the beginning of a flat sequence, we might want to close the cover. We might want to turn the light on and set its brightness and then take some flat exposures. We then want to turn the light off and then take the darks. And at the end of that, we would want to open the cover so we can take normal exposures. In here are a number of settings, including the exposure count and the filter. If I chose one of the filters that's populated in here under the equipment tab, it should pick up that exposure and use it for that dark flat and flat for the HA filter. So that's a useful thing to do. Now, it may be that you don't have a panel that flaps over the front of the telescope with a servo. It might just be on the observatory wall and you basically have to move the telescope to point at it. So for instance, where it says close flat panel cover and open, what you may need to do is do a slew. So for instance, under the telescope tab down here, you would move up to here, delete that one. So you want to slew to altitude and azimuth, be an altitude of zero, and maybe it's due west or east at say um, 90 degrees, and it will point it horizontally towards your panel. And at the end of this, you would slew to your target. So there's lots of different ways of looking at this and doing your flat frames. If you are doing sky flats, then you can't use this process as far as I'm aware, because this is working on the basis of trained exposures. So that's a number of options. And just to let you know where all these files have gone, in my documents folder, it stores them under their own unique subdirectories with flat and dark flat. And there are all my files that we've just created. Thank you for watching and being of some use to you.